So the Marine Corps is looking to retain and mature its force. Why and how do you plan to do that? Not unusual, I have to be honest with you. Ret retaining and maturing the force, not a new concept, quite frankly. I think what I would offer as an explanation of why it's a big deal now is, number one, as we see the Commandant, and this isn't new to, to this Commandant, we've always invested a, a great deal in how we train and educate Marines. What we have not had a necessity to do or a calling to do is retain more of that investment. And what we're really talking about is that first term, first term Marine, at the end of the first contract. You know, our current model lets go intentionally of about 75% of who we recruited just four years ago. And that model's been sustainable over time. It's probably still sustainable now. The difference right now is, is how much more investment that, that, that there is in that Marine, officer or enlisted, quite frankly. What we want to do is, is we want to make sure that we give Marines the opportunity who, who want, number one, to stay in the Marine Corps, number two, who have the talent and the, the skills to succeed and continue to succeed in the Marine Corps, and then develop a more mature force. What does that mean? Rather than retrain a whole group of new Marines, you keep more of the ones you've trained, then you, do, you start to retrain, re-educate, advance those skills, get more and more to the, the perfection of it is in, in the art of war. What's the advantage? The advantage is, is that you have a group of Marines now that have got the reps and sets, who are now capable of taking on the responsibilities the Commandant talked about in his planning guidance of you know, pushing those authorities down to the lowest level possible. That can only be done through experience, and experience is, is a, a time factor. It's an individual, are you capable factor, but really in terms of maturing the force, it's, it's about retaining our Marines. How do you go about doing that? And there's a follow-on question, right? Well, how, how, do you, how do you go about that? Number one, in order to stay in the Marine Corps, you got to first want to be a Marine. The number one incentive to, for recruiters to have someone join the Marine Corps is, do you want to be a Marine? The number one incentive to stay in the Marine Corps is do you want to be a Marine? That's number one. Secondly, it's a whole list of other things, and we can talk about them in a subsequent question, but the, the onus on retaining the force and why, and, and what, what's the incentive to do so, is to stay a United States Marine. So, so what are some of the roadblocks that you're seeing, or why are Marines getting out? It varies, quite frankly. Uh, first and foremost, the Marine Corps does not miss its retention mission. It may, it, we may need to adjust of what pay grade, rank, what experience or MOS skill in order to meet ultimately our end strength. That's, that's a requirement, congressionally reportable. The roadblocks are varied, but there are some consistencies. Uh, number one on the list is probably quality of life. What does that mean? Quality of life means exactly what it is. You know, the majority of the force is single, the majority of the force live in the barracks, and if the quality of our living conditions isn't, isn't where the Marines want it to be, arguably, where, where I think it, it should be, then what's the option? Let me live off the installation. If we can't do that, we got to make a choice. The better question is, well, how come we're, we, we're, not, we're not pushing that a little harder as far as how we can you know, maybe work on that? Everything is driven by resources. Everything is driven by resources. I think what you've seen in the Commandant's planning here the last couple of years, and as we go into the future with how we request our resources, there's a heavy emphasis on that quality of life. I'm speaking about barracks in particular, but it's any number of things I can bring up in follow-on questions. But I'd start there. Quality of food in our chow halls, dining facilities. It's a whole different list of questions. Command climate comes up a lot, but what does command climate mean? Command climate does not mean the commander and the senior you know, leaders of the organization. Usually it's if you're a corporal, it's the sergeant. It's the, it's the lieutenant. Not that they're poor quality, but young people, leading young people, you ask about maturing the force, you get a dynamic there. Maturing the leadership, right, is one of the reasons why you would want to mature the force. That gets after that command climate thing. And lastly, I gotta be honest with you, there's always families involved. There's a kind of a saying, you recruit a Marine, you retain a family. How we support our families is utmost importance. Uh, the Commandant's wife, and my wife, uh, who's a retired Marine, has been a spouse. Both of them obviously are spouses. Have done a great job over the last couple of years really gleaning from across the force where our family's you know, desires are to, hey, there's us too, not just the Marine. A lot's been learned there. Our Marine and family programs are, are working constantly. 
to try to get after those niche things that will help our families want to stay in the Marine Corps, which ultimately impacts the Marines' decision to stay. I would say there's probably a couple of top three or four. What are some specifics on the family aspect? What are you guys seeing? Why are families getting out or yeah. staying in the Marine Corps? Some of the same reasons the Marines are. There's a little bit of a st there's stability challenges. And I'll be honest, the Marine Corps is unique. There's, there's, there's more to being the most ready when the nation is least ready and always forward deployable, right? I mean, uh, 180,000, one-sixth of the Marine Corps, one-sixth of the entire force, right, is forward. I usually make an analogy. Uh, there's four-thirds to the Marine Corps. One-third's deployed, one-third just got back, one-third's getting ready to go, and the other third's in the supporting establishment, getting ready to get orders to one of those three organizations. That's the nature of the Marine Corps and how the Marine Corps is required to operate. So stability becomes a challenge. I think the number one thing we can do for our families is find those places where we can create stability, right? I'm the wrong example, but every one of my children has gone to more than one high school. Every one of them. Two more in the house. One's just finishing up. She is on her fourth high school in the last four years. Marine Corps required us as a family to do something, but that's, that's, that's synonymous across the force. If you can create stability in that family, the benefits to the family, spouse's occupation, right, their employment, huge stability to the Marine Corps in the organization, the cohesion of the unit is built through stability. There are times where that's impossible. Promotion and being recognized for your performance is a great thing in the Marine Corps. That often requires us to move to a place where your rank and experience is needed, right? That's a challenge to cohesion and stability. But that's one of the things we do for our families to try to find stability.